Namaste. So in this series so far, we've talked about bhava, transcendental emotion, in general. And we've also discussed the first kind of bhava, vibhava. Vibhava is the cause of the transcendental emotions. And these are mainly the 64 qualities of the Supreme in any form. Although the analysis that we're following is written about Krishna specifically, it applies to any form, male or female, of the Supreme God, huh? Brahman. Now, Brahman expands into many, many forms, unlimited forms, and each of those are full in transcendental qualities. Purnam. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Mudachate. That even though he expands into unlimited complete forms, full with all qualities and potencies, still he remains undiminished. And of course, we know from Advaita that is because all of these names and forms are actually unreal. They're only appearances in Brahman or phenomena of consciousness. So to dissolve the illusion that all these forms and activities and pastimes and phenomena are real, we have transcendental emotion which melts the heart and brings one into a loving union with God. This is prema, prema bhakti. And all of these things are actually after liberation, after moksha. And we'll encounter some verses later on that confirm this. This is a deep secret. Huh? <clears throat> that practice of bhakti, wholehearted devotional service, actually gives moksha without having to strive separately for it. This is a great secret. And these wonderful pastimes and transcendental emotions that arise in the heart are actually beyond ordinary emotions. They are spiritual, completely spiritual in their origin and in their experience. So after Vibhava causes these wonderful emotions within the heart, then comes Anubhava. Anu means following. So following the experience of Bhava, there are some bodily symptoms that express it. Let me read the definition. Anubhava refers to those things that express the bhava within the heart. They are predominantly external transformations. Thus, they are called udbhasvara, shining on the body. The external transformations known as anubhavas are actions such as dancing, rolling on the ground, singing, shouting, stretching the body, bellowing, yawning, breathing heavily, disregarding others, drooling, laughing loudly, whirling around, and hiccups. So these are the bodily transformations <laughs> that express the intense emotions in the heart of the bhakta. So let me give a few examples. For example, dancing. When my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, first came to the West, uh, he started teaching kirtan. Kirtan is the uh, congregational chanting of the holy names of God. And of course, this leads to ecstasy, melts the heart, and brings out the covered love of the Supreme within. 
So one of the first things he taught us was to dance, not to simply sit or stand quietly, but to move the body rhythmically in time with the mantra. Because this dancing, this is the, the result of extreme feelings of pleasure within. So it's an anubhava. And so we see still today in the West, devotees dancing while chanting. And of course, in India, it's a common thing, very common in, in temple services and festivals, especially. And then if this dancing mood reaches a peak, one may fall down and roll on the ground. I've seen it many times, experienced it myself also. <laughs> you go a little crazy, huh? That is, you lose the rational mind. You lose the uh, critical linear thought process, <laughs> the logical uh, deductive or inductive reasoning. And you simply become motivated by transcendental emotion. And uh, this is another kind of anubhava, rolling on the ground, singing or shouting. Uh, one becomes overwhelmed by jubilation to be in the presence of the Lord within. Uh, uh, sometimes people imitate this externally, but really it can't be imitated successfully because the impetus for such activities as singing and shouting are uh, the transcendental emotions within. And to imitate them externally is not the same thing. Yes, you can do it, but it's not the same. Just like stretching the body. Stretching the body while dancing is a pretty normal thing. But we're not dancing in response to any ordinary emotion, but a transcendental emotion within the heart caused by the presence of the Lord. The Lord is there. God or goddess is there within. But because of our nonsense ego, it's covered over. That presence can only be felt after sadhana has uncovered the presence of the transcendental being within us. And then we, have, we feel like dancing, singing, stretching the body in different ways, shouting in jubilation, sometimes even bellowing, it's called, <laughs> like an animal. And, uh, oh, I've seen so many times. See, if you don't have this experience, you might think that all of this is simply sentiment. But it's not sentiment, because sentiment is a feeling in relation to an external object. <clears throat> One's family or possessions or um, other things in the world that one considers beautiful or whatever. But sentiment does not describe these transcendental emotions. The proper term is bhava because it is a way that we come into relationship with the Supreme. And this is only through devotional service, bhakti yoga. And the uh, performance of rituals under rules and regulations is only a preliminary step. Once those activities become spontaneous from the heart, then bhava is revealed, and this is the stage of bhava yoga, or bhava bhakti. Then there's yawning. Huh? Sometimes after dancing, one feels tired and there's a yawning, or breathing heavily from the exertion of dancing. And these are transcendental symptoms. You might say, well, it's because you've been exercising the body and it needs oxygen. <laughs> but that's a different kind of yawning. 
the kind of yawning we're talking about is when you wake up, like when you wake up in the morning. Uh, big yawn, stretch, right? So what's happening in devotional service is one is waking up to this inner relationship with God or goddess. And it feels just like waking up. You want to yawn, stretch the body, move around, you know, like that. You, you can't stop yourself from doing it. Breathing heavily, disregarding others. <laughs> All these symptoms are considered socially inappropriate <laughs> or even unacceptable in polite company. But <laughs> the uh, association of ecstatic devotees is different from that. And uh, we are always open to and welcoming these transcendental symptoms, transcendental emotions, uh, because this is the reward. Uh, this is the actual effect of chanting, meditating on God, uh, just like one of our viewers wrote last night. I get spontaneous tears when I read the... Uh, exalted thoughts of the Vedanta commentaries by Shankaracharya. Tears from reading philosophy. How is it possible? It means the heart is open and one realizes the actual import of that philosophy. It's not just an idea in the mind. It's a reality to be experienced the actual presence of God. What else have we got? Drooling. When a devotee, uh, when, when the kundalini energy rises within and contacts space, akasha, one becomes stunned, like, bong. <laughs> because this new reality opening up within is so amazing and so attractive and so beautiful that one simply forgets about the outside world and becomes like stunned, like, and there may even be drooling, uh, like, uh. <laughs> but within one is feeling ecstatic transcendental pleasure. So this is not to be confused with the drooling of an idiot or a baby or something like that. This is a transcendental emotion. Laughing loudly. I wish I could explain the humor of God. Uh, uh, Bhagavan Nomi uh, would call the day of enlightenment, when you finally realize yourself, what you really are, the day of laughter. Huh? And it's not an ordinary laugh, it's a big belly laugh. <laughs> it's a deep laugh, because one realizes that all these things that I've cared so much about, and identified with, and called myself, and so on, are simply illusions. They are temporary. They come and go. They're not real. When you realize that, and you realize that you are the consciousness, you are the awareness that is aware of all these things and experiencing everything. Everything. Huh? I mean, the whole universe, God and everybody, shows up in our consciousness. <laughs> so, you have a good belly laugh at all the silly ideas that you've had up until then. <laughs> whirling around. Huh? One may whirl around like a whirling dervish in ecstasy, and one may even have hiccups. Uh, this is because of the disturbance of the bodily airs, the apana, due to extreme transcendental emotion. 
Anubhavas are of two types, with suitable names of shita, meaning cool, with a lack of bodily movement, and kshepana, meaning throwing about, involving distinct bodily movements. Shita includes singing, yawning, breathing heavily, disregarding others, drooling, and smiling. Kshepana includes dancing, rolling on the ground, shouting, stretching the body, bellowing, laughing loudly, whirling around, and hiccups. So these are the Anubhavas that automatically arise following the experience of bhava within the heart caused by the vibhavas, the qualities and activities of the beautiful Lord. And then the next time we'll continue to discuss these bhavas and discuss the transcendental ecstatic symptoms in detail. Aung Tatsat Aung Shakti Aung